So I want the guys back there, because it is all guys, that to uh, put up this really, really brief video, which this was my first response to this video, uh, to this reading. How about no? No. Uh-uh, no way. Come on, no. 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 <laughs> Minute, no. I think that's what we, when we hear this, we say, uh-uh, this is not the way it's supposed to be. It's not fair, it's not just, it's not right. It's not the American way. Once again, one of my favorite authors, Barbara Brown Taylor, says this about the parable. Jesus scrambles the usual order of things, challenging the sacred assumption by which most of us live our lives, namely that the front of the line is the place to be, that the way to win God's attention is to be the best person, the hardest worker, the first one in the vineyard in the morning and the last one to leave at night. Only according to the parable of the laborers in the vineyard, those at the end of the line will not only be as paid as much as those at the front, they get paid first. And then she echoes our feeling, this no, it is not fair. So what do we do with this? When looking at this parable, there's a couple of things that stand out. First of all, we're not told why the landowner is needed of returning to the marketplace. I have read some commentaries and they said, you know, if he's a landowner, he knows how much workers he needs. But he goes back not only once, twice, he goes back four times to get workers. Second, we're not told why the last ones hired were idled, why they were not seen in the marketplace earlier, why they were not picked. We are just, they are just told to go in the vineyard. They, unlike the other ones, are not told how much they would be paid or they would be paid fairly. They are just told to go, and they do. You see, it's these last workers that seems to raise our ire, our no response. They are the ones that attack our understanding of fairness. Understandably, we want to fill in the gaps and make um, assumptions about their work ethic. And it's really interesting because I think most of us, our default is to think negative things. Oh, they really didn't want to work. They're lazy. They just sat around. They want us to have handouts. You know, I thought about this for a while, and I never thought about, you know, I don't know about you, but there were a couple times when I was a kid, and we were playing games. I was the last one picked. And I tell you what, if they didn't have to pick everybody sometimes, I'm not sure I would have been picked. So I'm wondering, you know, maybe it had nothing to do with their work ethic, but more about how we or how they were viewed. Were they not strong enough? Or was there a little bit of a handicap? You know, were they the outsider? They were someone that they just didn't want to be in their vineyard. Another issue for reflection is the order in which the workers are paid. The owner specifically instructs the manager to reverse the order, and that should be a clue to us to sit up and take notice that Jesus wants us to pay attention to what is going on here. So when the last ones come up, the manager hands them a denarius and sends them on the way. And then when the ones that are hired at three, he hands them a denarius. And the ones that are hired at noon, he hands them a denarius. And the ones that are hired at nine o'clock, he hands them a denarius. And then when the last workers come up, they have seen all these people in front of them. They witnessed what they were given, and you can imagine how they felt. For when they first saw the first workers, those five o'clock workers come, they were thinking, this is my lucky day, man. I am going to really rake in. And then as they watched, they went from hopeful anticipation to disappointment and not understanding to when they finally got to them, they were downright angry and indignant. They were jealous and their entitlement had consumed them. And they lash out and say, this is not fair. It's interesting they have three things to their complaint. The very first is they said, we assumed that we would receive more. And why wouldn't they? If those who had only worked a few hours got a denier, surely they would get at least double, maybe triple, quadruple that amount. That's what we would expect to happen. 
The second complaint, which is really kind of interesting too, and I think you could do a whole sermon on this one, is they say, you have made them equal to us. They deemed those hired last as less worthy than they were, that they did not deserve what they got, and more importantly, that they did not have a right to be paid that much money. What seems to be at play here is a sense of who they are and their work ethic. Equal pay for equal work, it's fair, but equal pay for unequal work is not fair and it's not okay. And then the third complaint is, and this is interesting too, so one, they thought they'd get more and they didn't get it. Two, they felt like, okay, we're on the same plane level and they didn't like it. And then three is, they said, but we really did all the hard work. We started early in the morning, and we worked our tails off. We worked through the sun. We worked through the heat. We got dirty. We put in all those hours, and we got paid just as much as the person who came and worked only one hour at the end of the day. You see, I think most of us, and this is the problem with this parable, is we agree with them. We agree with their complaints. They're not outrageous. As a matter of fact, they're pretty mainstream. And that's the problem, especially when it comes to understanding that this is a parable not about working in the vineyard, but that might be too. But it's really a parable about God's kingdom, what God's kingdom is like. It's counterintuitive to what we've been taught, how we see the world, our sense of playness, of what's fair play in order. Remember, it's a parable of reversal. The first shall be last, and the last shall be first. It's a parable of what God wants for all of us. It's about God's extravagant generosity, which is undeserved, unearned. There's nothing that we can do. We can work all day in the field, or we can work an hour. And God loves us. It's about receiving our daily bread and making sure all are paid. You know, have you ever thought about those last workers who went out at 5 o'clock? Those last workers are the ones, in my opinion, they're some of the people who are down, keep on getting kicked when they are down. It's about God's justice and about God's joy that comes with justice. It's understanding what it's like that God desires for us in all creation. And it's not comparing us to each and everybody else. It's taking in and receiving God's gifts that God has given to you and to me and to all people. See, God loves indiscriminately, and God loves everyone equally. God's love is inclusive. It's for all people. He does not love us more because what we do or who we are or how much we give of our time or effort, or how much we make. We Americans, I have to tell you, I think more than maybe any other country, I don't know, but it seems like we Americans tie ourselves into our work. You know, if I work long hours, if I work through my lunch hour, if I don't take holidays, if I don't take vacations, then I'm a better person. Well, you better go back and read this parable. Those who work all day and those who only work an hour are equally loved by God. The deserving and the undeserving, the strangers and the enemies, God's love is extended to all. And I know that sometimes we like that and other times we don't. This parable is abundantly clear that God is a God of generosity. The landowner says, I choose to be generous. And we might say even outrageously generous. He says, it's my land. It's my money. I have treated you fairly. We agreed on something that was right and good and fair. And yet when I gave someone else something, you cry out foul. Jill Duffield says this, the master upends all our norms. They were left baffled, and that's true by such generosity and grumbling when we think we should receive more. We do not know what to do when there is not a graduation of value among people, when the comparisons with which we evaluate ourselves and others do not matter, when we cannot calculate what we and others are worth. Grace confuses the system we thought was a given. 
I want you to hear that again. Grace confuses the system that we thought was a given. And then she goes on to write, God wants everyone in the vineyard. God wants everyone paid a living wage. No one left out on the streets. The landowner reminds the workers that he has kept his part of the bargain. He has paid them exactly what they agreed to be paid. It was a fair wage. He did not cheat them. He did not treat them poorly or dishonestly. And that was not their complaint. Their complaint was is that he was generous. Their complaint was that he was generous with other people and they wanted him to be that generous with them and even more. Their complaint was that they felt slighted. They thought they deserved to get more. And because of that, they couldn't enjoy what they got. I listened to Kathleen this morning before I came. I usually do in the morning. And she said this, which I thought, you know what? You are right on, girlfriend. She said, generosity is not about fairness. So hear it again. Generosity is not about fairness. Generosity is about love. God's love for you and for me and for all people. You see, Generosity liberates us from our things and our stuff and keeping store and thinking that we are better than someone else. Generosity opens up the door, flings them wide open to joy, and I mean deep joy, to the grace and beauty and mystery and awe and awesomeness of Almighty God. Generosity allows us to give of ourselves freely and willingly to God to participate in kingdom living, generosity opens us to receive the blessings of the day each and every day. It allows us to sing at the top of our lungs our hallelujahs, to run with, a, with, with sheer delight and abandonment, perhaps through the sand and the waves at Siesta Key, inhaling the sweet smells of the early morning. It allows us to hold on to our babies and hug them. It allows us to look in the face of one another and be happy for what they have and who they are. Generosity is not about fairness. And if you think it is, you will be dis disappointed time and time again. It's about God's love and God's goodness and God's grace and God's abundant mercy for all people. Generosity wipes out those no's and replaces it with yes, yes, yes.